So we go into the shop on Thursday and we find what no fish keeper ever wants to find. One of our favorite fish in our 240 gallon display tank just dropped dead out of nowhere. We have questions. We want answers. We want to know what happened. I figured this is a perfect topic for today's episode of Tank Talk. Hey folks, it's John with KidsTropicals.com. It's Sunday, November 9th, 2014. Welcome to this edition of Tank Talk. Sitting in front of the angel tank that finally has angels in it. Really excited about that. I just finally brought them over last night. We also added three German Blue Rams and 12 Cardinal Tetras. Cardinal Tetras are one of my favorites, so really excited about that. You will be able to watch them grow like we're watching these guys grow. And uh, right before your eyes, every time we do a new episode, you'll see that they're getting a little bigger and bigger. This is going to turn into something really special. So let's talk about the mystery fish death. This is an email that I get all the time. John, my tank has been running for two years now. Everything checks out perfectly. I test my water regularly. I'm on top of my maintenance. All of the fish get along. Everything's fine. But yesterday I came home from work and one of my fish was dead. What happened? Do you have any idea what happened? This is one of my least favorite emails to get, folks, because I don't have any answers for you. There's really no way for me to know what happened to your fish. But what I do know is that we as fish keepers, when something like this happens, we want answers. We want to know now what happened. And we will flood the forums and we will go comment on people's videos and ask them. And we'll, we'll go crazy wanting to know why our fish died. And you know what? The answer sometimes is it's not what you're looking for. Sometimes it just happens, and that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to get into some of the scenarios that I've experienced, things that I've had happen to me, including what just happened on Thursday, and hopefully we'll make you feel a little bit better about this kind of a thing. Let's face it, as fish keepers, it's just one of those things that happens. So I hope you liked my little tribute that I did for Vinny there in the beginning. Vinny is one of those fish that we've had for a long time. We've had him for about four years, and he was a full-grown adult when we bought him. And so it was very sad when he passed away out of nowhere. I mean, literally Wednesday, he was perfectly fine eating, being a completely normal fish, and Thursday, he's gone. What did I do? What did I do when I found him dead? I didn't do anything. What can I do? We can't do autopsies on fish. We're not going to cut them open and try to investigate their organs and figure out what killed them. I don't know anybody that can do that. I don't know anybody who's ever done that. So... There's nothing we can do about it. If we're checking our water and everything's fine, we're just going to have to say, eh, it's one of those things. I'll tell you about a similar story that I had that happened last year. Had a customer in the shop and he was looking at our small, unsexed Nimbochromus polystigmas. Now, if you remember from way, way back, I actually did a video about my polystigma that I had in my 240. I was very proud of that fish. He was gorgeous. He was about eight inches. Beautiful. So the customer says, I want to see what this fish is going to look like when it's bigger. I said, well, follow me. Let's go and look at the one that I have in the 240. We go up there. We look at him. He's beautiful. Customer says, yeah, I like that. I want to get one of those. So then he starts talking about another fish that I have in the 240. I don't remember which one it was. He points to this one and he says, I like that one. Do you have that one smaller? I said, yeah, let's go look at him. We go back over right near where the smaller unsexed polystigmas were. And I show him the unsexed fish that we have and this other one that he wanted to see. And he said, yeah, I like that one too. I, I want to go back to the 240 though. And I want to see the big version of that one again. We walk over to the 240 and guess what? That polystigma that I had just taken him over to see was upside down, dead as a doornail on top of that tank, floating on top of the tank. It happened that fast. It was literally one minute, folks. He's perfectly fine. And then the next minute, dead. It was pretty embarrassing. But again, what did I do about that? First of all, I had to get the fish out of there and get rid of them. And to answer your question, yes, the customer did still 
by a, a smaller polystigma. It didn't scare him away from those. But I didn't do anything. Again, I, I've been in this long enough. I didn't rush to the computer and get on forums and look for answers. I didn't go and start reading articles and all that kind of stuff. Because again, I've done this long enough to know that you're never going to get the answers that you're looking for. Now, I'm not criticizing people who want answers, who have this happen and they just want to know something. They want something to make them feel better. I'm not criticizing you. But what I'm saying is you're probably not going to get the answers that you look for. If you go on a forum and you tell them, my fish died, what happened? People are going to ask you the same questions every single time. What are your water parameters? What is this? What is that? And they're never really going to be able to give you the answers. They're asking you these follow-up questions because they want to help, but more than likely, they're not going to be able to do anything about it or help you to feel better. In the end, you're probably going to be told, eh, it happens. So there are a few things that you can check if this does happen to you. There's things that I want you to look for and things that I want you to check before you just come to the conclusion, ah, it just happens. I've told you on two different occasions that I didn't do anything after these fish died. And the reason why is because I know what's going on in my tank. I check it regularly. I check it all the time. I do big water changes twice a week. I know what's going on in my tank. So there's really no reason for me to do anything about it. However, I do have some things that I want you to check. I don't want you to just automatically say, oh, well, what are you going to do? There are some things to look for. First thing would be pretty obvious. Make sure that your equipment is running properly, including your heater, your air pump, your filtration, all of that good stuff. Make sure it's working because if one of those things has failed and that is what killed your first fish, you may have more to come. So you definitely want to make sure that everything is working properly. Next thing is going to be your water parameters, obviously. Pull out your test kit. If you don't have one, go buy one. Test for things like ammonia, nitrate, nitrites. You might have had a sudden spike that caused that fish to die. And again, there could be more to follow. So you want to make sure that those things are all in check. And then also think back of what was going on. Do, do you know of anything that was going on in your tank that may have stressed this fish out to a point where he had a heart attack and just dropped dead? You might think of something like, oh, yeah, I remember that one fish was really chasing him around really bad or was beating him up or whatever. You may think of something that might help you. But if you check all of these things, your equipment's running, your water tests fine, everybody else in the tank looks perfectly fine, then that's when you just have to say it happens. Now, another email that I get a lot, and I get, I just got one recently, which was another thing that kind of helped to spark this topic idea, was a customer that emailed and said, all of my fish were fine. We came home one day and the fish, one of our fish was dead, but I found, all I found was his skeleton. So do you think that it was the other fish that killed this fish, that, that uh, the aggression towards him is what ended up killing him and all of my fish are mean and they killed him? Do you think that that's what happened? Well, that's again another email that my answer is, I don't know. But here's the thing. I think a lot of people get confused because they find that carcass. They find the fish dead, and you never really find the fish dead and still looking perfect. You always find that fish is dead and the eyeballs are eaten out. The gills have been chewed on. They're missing scales all over. Their fins are almost completely gone. And you automatically assume that it must have been the other fish in the tank. The other fish must have beaten this fish to death. And that's not always the case, folks, because I don't care if you're keeping angels and cardinal tetras or if you're keeping peacocks. If there's a dead fish in the tank, all of the other fish in there are going to go and pick at that dead carcass. It's natural. That's what they do. And so if you find the fish that has been chewed up and eaten like that, don't automatically assume that it was the fish that did that and that is what killed them. Most likely, they did that after it was already dead. So if you watched this video hoping that I was going to give you this miracle answer as to why your fish may have died, I'm sorry to disappoint you. The bottom line is, I don't know. I don't know why your fish died. I don't know why Vinny died. And these customers that email me, that's going to be my answer to them too. It's unfortunate, but it's one of those things that happens in this hobby. The best thing that you can do to prevent this from happening is to do your job.
keep an eye on everything. Make sure that your equipment is operating properly. Make sure your water's at the right temperature. You need to check that, folks, because that is a big killer. A heater going either way, a heater breaking, and it's just not heating the tank anymore, and your tank freezes, not literally, but you know what I mean. Or it could go the other way, the heater malfunctions and cooks all of your fish. I've had both scenarios happen. So make sure that your equipment is running properly, because that first fish might have been the first fish, and there's going to be more to come. If everything's operating properly, you're taking care of the water, you're doing your job, it can still happen. And it sucks, but it's part of the hobby, and there's not a whole lot that you can do. You can be the best fish keeper on the planet, and your fish can still die. And I know it's sad to say this, but get used to it, because there's nothing you can do to keep these fish alive forever. So I hope that you've enjoyed this answer. I hope that I've been able to help you through and maybe help you understand that things like this do happen. I'm sorry I didn't have that magic answer that you were looking for, but hey, we had some fun anyway, didn't we? So thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to support our sponsors. I've been putting them up here. Don't forget about kgtropicals.com. We've got all of those Amazon affiliate links. you got to go over there and order up your stuff, particularly since Christmas is coming. You're going to be buying all of your Christmas gifts and stuff like that. If you click through our website, just go to one of those links and click shop. You're automatically in there. And anything that you buy, we will actually get a teeny, teeny, tiny commission for. It would be much appreciated. We got to make a penny any way we can, right? So thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next week.